I'm going to show you how well the new ASUS Zephyrus M16 gaming laptop performs in games at different resolutions and compares against other laptops. Oh, and stick around for the giveaway. I've got the highest spec M16 here, so 8-core Intel i9-11900H processor, Nvidia RTX 3070 graphics, 16 gigs of memory and dual channel, and a 16-inch 165Hz screen with a resolution higher than 1440p. There are of course lower spec models that are also cheaper too. You can find examples and check updated prices with those links down in the description below. Just before we get into the laptop benchmarks though, do you want the chance to win an RTX 3080 graphics card or VR headset? Of course you do, so stick around and hear about this video sponsor, Veil VR. Veil VR is a competitive 5 vs 5 multiplayer shooter game focused on tactical gunplay and combat, but in virtual reality with full body animation without the need for additional tracking hardware. Veil is community focused with a strong social component, along with a ranking system and tournaments you can compete in to prove your skills. Choose your side, experience team-based action, and work together to achieve victory. Veil is currently in testing, but you can request access on Steam, or join the large community of VR enthusiasts in Discord. Check out the sponsored link in the video description to find out more about Veil VR, enter the global competition, and join the community. And now back to the M16. The screen has a relatively fast 4.4 millisecond average greater gray response time with panel overdrive enabled, which is the default. It's doing quite well when compared against others, one of the faster results I've recorded, and is right in line with other 165 hz 2560 by 1600 panels measured in the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro and Legion 7 laptops. The total system latency is also on the lower side compared to other laptops tested. This is the total amount of time between a mouse button press and when the gunshot fires in CSGO. ASUS advertises the RTX 3070 model with an 80 watt power limit, but with up to 100 watts with dynamic boost. Now I found my M16 would run its 3070 up to 100 watts in a GPU only stress test as specified, but at times with the CPU also under heavy stress test, the GPU would drop down to 65 watts. Though 80 was more common, it just depends on the workload. Lower power limits are a trade-off with the Zephyrus series in order to get that thinner design. The ASUS Armory Crate software, the control panel for the laptop, offers different performance profiles. I've done all testing with the highest manual mode with power sliders maxed out and fans set to full speed for best results. And this also applies the following overclock to the graphics by default, but you can modify it. Unfortunately there's no MUX switch, so it's not possible to disable optimum and get a speed boost in games. But we can still bypass Optimus and the integrated graphics by connecting an external screen to the frontmost Type-C port. So I'll test this as well and show you what sort of a speed boost that gives us. Alright, so let's start out by seeing how well the M16 actually compares against other laptops in a number of games at different resolutions. We'll be comparing with standard 1080p and 1440p resolutions as that's what I've got data for. But stick around till after the comparisons because I'll also show you how well the M16 performs with its native 2560 by 1600 resolution. Cyberpunk 2077 was tested in Little China with the Street Kid Life Path, and I've got the M16 highlighted in red. Let's start with 1080p results. I've pretty much only got current gen laptops to compare with, as this is a newer game and I'm not able to keep the laptops I review. In any case, it's actually ahead of some other RTX 3070 laptops that have higher GPU power limits and a MUX switch. Like the MSI GP76, though that does also have a 6-core Intel CPU. Unfortunately, I've got less data at the higher 1440p resolution, because because those screens are still relatively new for laptops. The M16 is one of the lower results now relative to the other laptops, but hey it's also ahead of the Zephyrus G15 with similar wattage RTX 3080 graphics just below it, while the much smaller Bleed 14 is a couple of FPS ahead. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested with the game's benchmark. At 1080p, the M16 is one of the lowest scores I've got in this game. The much cheaper HP Omen 15 with a similar wattage RTX 3070 is nearby though, and hey it's still ahead of the quad-core Tough Dash F15 a couple of positions below, which also has 3070 graphics. Stepping up to 1440p and things don't really change. The M16 is still below most of these other laptops. Granted, most of the results are also from 3080 laptops, as those just happen to be the specs I've gotten that have actually been paired with screens that can support this resolution. Control was tested running through the same part of the game on all laptops. At 1080p, we're looking much better compared to Red Dead Redemption 2 just before it. The M16 is slightly ahead of the higher wattage 3070 in Alienware's M15R5, and some of the lower wattage 3080 options are only just a few FPS ahead. Again, all options without MUX switch. Moving up to 1440p, and once more the M16 is lower compared to others, but almost 60 FPS in control at max settings before activating DLSS sounds alright to me at this higher resolution. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with the game's benchmark, and as an older game now, I've got results from older generations of hardware for comparison. The M16 is looking quite good here, above 100 FPS at max 
Max settings. Though again, I'm testing 1080p as this is the resolution I've got most data for, and we do have a much higher 2560 by 1600 resolution. I've tested Battlefield 5 in campaign mode at ultra settings. The M16 was doing well here too. Perhaps the newer 11th gen Intel CPU is making more of a difference here compared to the GPU, given the M16 is ahead of some 3080 laptops. Far Cry 5 was tested with the game's benchmark at max settings, and this test definitely depends more on the processor, though the 11900H isn't able to match the same processor in the Zephyrus S17. Granted, that one does also have a higher wattage GPU. As mentioned earlier, it is possible to boost gaming performance of the M16 by connecting an external screen to the Type-C display port down the front, as this bypasses Optimus and the integrated graphics. We're almost looking at a 15% boost to average FPS in Shadow of the Tomb Raider with this simple change, putting it a couple of FPS ahead of the larger and higher spec S17 just below it. Though my S17 was also constrained by Optimus and could also receive a performance boost with an external screen too. Alright, so now that we've got an idea of where the Zephyrus M16 compares against other laptops, let's find out how well it actually performs in games with its native 2560 by 1600 resolution, as this is the resolution that you would actually run games at if you bought this laptop. Cyberpunk 2077 was only above 60 FPS at the lowest setting preset, though medium settings are close and like most modern AAA games, you don't necessarily need high FPS to play them well. High settings wouldn't be bad either. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was tested with the game's benchmark, and was around 60 FPS at high to very high settings, which I think is plenty given I played through the whole game without issue below this. Red Dead Redemption 2 was still above 60 FPS with the high setting preset, despite the higher resolution that we're running at, a decent result. Call of Duty Warzone was tested with either all settings at minimum or maximum, as it doesn't have predefined setting presets. There wasn't that much difference between the different settings though, but max settings was still playing well enough for me. For control, I've tested with ray tracing on in the green bars, which is much lower than the others, with ray tracing plus DLSS in the red bars, which is doing much better and around 60 FPS regardless of setting preset, or with both ray tracing and DLSS disabled in the purple bars, which can reach higher FPS at lower settings if this is your preference. Microsoft Flight Simulator was tested in the Sydney Landing Challenge. The frame rates are looking much lower compared to others, but again, like a lot of AAA games, we don't need super Super high FPS to play fine. Plus, turning down the resolution is also an option, though it won't quite be as clear. Watch Dogs Legion was tested with the game's benchmark. 60 FPS was possible around high settings, while very high wasn't much different. So, still looking good while being able to run well enough at this higher resolution. Fortnite was tested with the replay feature. No problems at all as an esports title. Still nearly 100 FPS even at max settings. Though, technically, if you wanted average frame rate above the screen's 165Hz refresh rate, you'd need to drop down to medium settings. CSGO is hitting high frame rates too, even with the higher resolution. But as we've seen in the past, this game is heavily bottlenecked by the iGPU, so with a muck switch or an external screen, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a 100 FPS boost. Rainbow Six Siege was tested with the game's benchmark using Vulkan. Like always, no difference between the top three settings, which are all hitting average FPS near the screen's refresh rate. I showed Battlefield 5 earlier at lower resolution, but this older game is still running pretty well even at this higher resolution. Likewise, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is also doing fairly well at this higher resolution too, easily above 60 FPS even at max settings. Speaking of older games, The Witcher 3 is also running well at max settings. Though, as is always the case, we can get significant performance gains just by lowering one setting preset to high. So, even with the native resolution, which is above 1440p, the M16 is still performing quite well in all of the games tested, at least with the higher specs I've got in my unit. Again, there are also lower spec alternatives linked down in the description below. Now, there's still a lot more I need to cover about the M16, like thermals and battery life for example. And all of that will be covered in the upcoming full review video, so if you're new to the channel then make sure you're subscribed for that upcoming content. And I'm also hoping to compare the M16 against the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro to find out who does the better 16 inch laptop. Come and join me in Discord and get behind the scenes videos by supporting the channel in Patreon. And come and check out some of my other videos over here next, I'll see you over in one of those.